who makes a play for a score. In the game to go to the finals, Margaret Fogarty says her 12-year-old son scored the winning goal. But the DU Junior Pioneers never played that final game at the Mile High Meltdown Tournament this past weekend. The coaches and the director uh, of our team made a very difficult decision to withdraw from that final game because of safety concerns. They were concerned the players weren't safe from parents. Um, it was very competitive and one of the dads from the opposing team um, threatened our children and was incredibly belligerent. It was terrifying. Terrifying, but not uncommon. This is a worldwide problem. This is a cancerous, toxic problem that is poisoning youth sports. Brian Barlow, a collegiate soccer official, started this Facebook page called Offside to call out this kind of abusive behavior from parents in youth sports. Many leagues have created zero tolerance policies to address the problem. The tournament Margaret's son played in had one. Saying zero tolerance is the new political thoughts and prayers. People implement programs that actually don't work, that actually have no data behind them to say that it's effective. Child psychologist Cheryl Ziegler says the research is clear. Parents whose identities are tied to their kids' sports are more likely to get angry and emotional. Ziegler says leagues should require training for parents. Yes, we are teaching adults essentially how to regulate really big emotions. And that's something that, again, it's all over the country. It's a problem adults clearly need, and specifically around youth sports. Ziegler says the focus needs to stay on how this aggressive behavior impacts these kid athletes. She says kids of parents who are aggressive at sporting events are more likely to experience increased anxiety, depression, and increased levels of behavioral problems and substance abuse. Our kids are always watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough. All right, thank you, Katie.